Hi everyone, today we'll discuss about the properties and classification of composite restorative resins used in dentistry. A composite is a physical mixture of materials. The part of the mixture generally are chosen with the purpose of abrasing the properties of the parts to achieve intermediate properties. Composites typically involve a dispersed phase of filler particles distributed within a continuous phase, that is matrix phase. Let's see in the diagram here, this is the continuous phase and dispersed phase. Filler particles are in the composite and external interface and internal interface of the composite is shown in the diagram. Composition. What are the components of a composite? There is a resin matrix, fillers, coupling agents, activator initiator system, inhibitors and optical modifiers or coloring agents. These are the components of a composite resin. Based on the mean particle size of the major filler, the composites can be a traditional composite, a small sized composite, microfilled composite or hybrid composites and the respective particle sizes are given as traditional composite is of the size 8 to 12 micrometer and the most smallest is the microfield 0 0.04 to 0 0.4 micrometer uh, recently we have even smaller um, field particles that is nano field composites so here is the based on field particle size and distribution mega field these are very large field particles are there macro field midi field these all are arranged in the descending order of their size. Midi field, mini field, micro field, and nano field composite. The filler size of the nano field composites are very, very small, that is 0 0.005 to 0 0.01 micrometer. Now, based on the method of polymerization, this can be self cured, auto cured, or chemically cured composites. And Light cured composites, there are two types of light cured composites, ultraviolet light cured composite and visible light cured composite. And there are also dual cured composites. These are both self-curing and light curing mechanism is employed in this in their setting. Staged curing composite is are those composites in which there is initial soft start polymerization and it is followed by complete polymerization and these are named as staged curing. Based on their use, the composites can be anterior composite, which are meant for the filling in the anterior tooth, posterior composites, core build of composites and leading composites. Now let's see how Finishing and polishing the composite will affect the surface roughness due to the filler particle. Let's see in this case the composite particles is very large that is mid fill composite. When these are finished and polished the breakage of the particle will lead to the roughness of the surface here. That is in the case of midfield composite when the particle filler size is very very small in the case of microfill composite after the finishing and polishing the smooth surface will be produced hence the microfill composites are more desirable nowadays with average roughness values of less than one micrometer are considered uh, clinically very smooth results can be obtained and commonly it's able surface smoothness of 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 micrometer using submicron polishing play based on materials that include submicron filler phases. That is submicron means less than one micron. Okay. Contouring composite. And when the we have restored the composite after the finishing, after the reducing the surface roughness if it is coarse finished the surface irregularities will be on the order of approximately 20 micrometer when it is fine finished it will be in the order of 
to micrometer and after polishing the surface roughness or that will be 0 0.2 micrometer now on based on the classification of a field of particle size we have here mega field it is larger than this macro field so it is not, not shown in the figure and nano field is smaller than the micro field so it is not shown again and these are on the basis of decreasing size we can see the decrease in size from macro to midi midi to mini and mini to micro field composites and we have got here hybrid midi field hybrid midi field is what is this these are the approximately of the size midi field but hybrid means size are mixed with mini field or other and hybrid mini field is also same basically it is size of mini field but smaller particles are incorporated into the hybrid mini field and what is heterogeneous some particles particle size are uneven some are very smaller some are larger that is heterogeneous mini field and this is heterogeneous micro field and hybrid mixed filler in which two filler types are present this can be also homogeneous modified homogeneous and heterogeneous filler so there we can see the these are the composite uh, setup what are the uh, basic materials required for the composite resin restoration and light curing for those uh, self cure we don't need to use the light cure but with the uh, um, light cure and the dual cure composite we must use the light cure and light curing can be accomplished with uh, various light curing units which may be of the type quartz tungsten halogen QTS curing units or plasma arc curing PSC units or light emitting diode LED curing units and lasers laser curing units here also I have mentioned there light curing can be of any of the following type based on the property of the composite we are using these are the some figures of the light curing units which can be which can be of various property and various wavelength various types of light can be used here and the variables associated with visible light curing uh, these are linked to many curing equipment factors procedural factors and restoration factors these uh, curing equipment factors these are not under our control much this bulb frosting or degradation light reflector degradation optical filter degradation these are not under our control much these are in the optimum level for the new light curing unit but uh, with time with the when the instrument's quality is deteriorated these are not under our control but we need to know what all the variables are coming to play during the manipulation procedure and the procedural factors when light curing the direction of the light tip that will determine the degree of curing access to restoration distance from the surface uh, the light curing unit should be held closely to the surface the size of the tip, tip movement, time of exposure, these all will be the decisive factors, procedural factors responsible for the uh, determining the degree of curing and restoration factors, restoration thickness, cavity design. The smaller thickness will require less time of exposure and it will be more uh, sufficiently cured than very, very thick restorations. And cavity design, filler amount and size, restoration shade, monomer ratios, these all affect the um, light curing of the composite resin restoration. And this is the internal operation of our QTS quartz tungsten halogen visual light curing unit. 
Uh, here is the light and the reflector. Here is the circuit board, cooling fan, bandpass and filters. From here the light is coming and through this light pipe to the desired location the light is passed. And it is a picture of the symbol piston grip unit of a light pipe. This is the light pipe and this is the seal through which the operator views the light. And uh, this is the light socket, uh, light bulb and reflector. This is uh, this is all the basics. Uh, And this graph shows the light intensity influence on the polymerization zone. Let's see here. This is the central beam of the curing light. As we move towards the periphery, the penetrating power is also decreasing. As we can see here, only 15% of uh, con uh, DVF conversion, only 15% of the material is cured up to this length okay and in the surface zone almost 65 percent most of the uh, material is cured in the surface zone and that is width of the cavity design will also affect our DDF curing and so depth of the cure will be ac accordingly so due to this the light pipe should be held as close to the tooth to be cured, as close to the restoration to be cured. So here is incorrect, it is placed very far, so the depth of the curing is too less, that is not even 2 mm, when we place the light pipe very far. When placed very near, approximately 1 to 1.5 mm near the restoration, the curing depth is sufficient, about 2 mm. Now, there is another thing called configuration factor, C factor. In the C factor is the ratio of unbound to bound to unbound surfaces. Let's see what is this. In the sealant or class 5 restorations, we place the sealant here. This one is the bound surface and we have five unbound surfaces. This, this wall, this wall, this wall, and this wall. For example, we'll, I'll give when preparing a class one cavity, when the base is placed to the sealant, uh, let's suppose this is the mesial wall, this is the distal, and buccal and lingual. These four words are unbound surfaces and the occlusal surface that is also unbound. So four um, mesial, proximal, buccal and lingual and the occlusal. This made five unbound surfaces are present in the class five restoration. And uh, when the when the sealant is placed, you know, I, I gave just the example of class 1 cavity, but one, this becomes a 1 is to 5 configuration of C factor configuration becomes only when there is sealant placement. For class 4 restorations, similarly, this, there are 2 bound surfaces and 4 unbound surfaces are present there. Similarly, you can see 3 is to 3, 4 is to 2, 5 is to 1 ratio, all over. And wear resistance. Wear resistance, there are various types of wear resistance. Uh, the mechanisms suggested are wear by food. When the food comes in contact with the composite, contact free area, CFA wear. And that contact free means contact there, there is no contact with the opposing tooth okay impact by tooth contact in centric occlusion or occlusal wear oca occlusal contact area wear 
and sliding by tooth contact in function, that is functional contact area where FC aware, probing by tooth contact interproximally, mesial and distal interproximal space of the restoration, proximal contact area where and where from oral profile axis methods. When we brass, we uh, use dentrophies that may also cause the wear of the composite resin. Now here we can see the examples where are the exact sites where this uh, wear occurs. This is the area of contact free area where here the opposing tooth doesn't occlude. Only the foot particles come and wear the composite restoration. So this is CFA wear, occlusal wear. Here the uh, opposing cusp of the other tooth come in contact and that is occlusal wear and the functional wear, functional contact area wear during the mastication this come in contact with the opposing tooth and this is the proximal wear, proximal contact area wear and toothbrush wear can basically appear occur in all the place because we don't brush here only so in all the places toothbrush wear may occur and protection theory of CFA wear and macro protection from the composite by the food particles are very large and if our cavity design is such that composite is protected so that the food bolus doesn't affect that is the macro protection and micro protection is from small particles like food bolus is very large and if the inter interparticle spacing is too less the CFA wear is automatically protected CFA wear is not pro possible. CFA wear means the contact free area where that is due to the food particles. Okay. Now for clinical correlations uh, while doing the composite restorations there should be color matching uh, so that approximately uh, it will match with the adjacent tooth. Interfacial staining. Secondary caries might be there that should be considered marginal integrity and post-operative sensitivity. Mm, this should be the clinical considerations for the composite resin restoration. Mm, thank you very much. If you love this video, please subscribe and share us. Mm, any constructive uh, suggestions and feedbacks are always welcome. Have a nice day. Thank you.